Okay, so two things you should know about me. Number one, I love Barbie. So much so that I listened to Barbie movie soundtracks for fun and I definitely played with Barbies until high school. And number two, I love dressing up for things, especially if I can dress on themes. So when I heard that the Barbie movie was coming out, I was like, oh, of course I'm gonna dress up. It's, it's two of my favorite things. And then it kind of became a thing that everybody was gonna dress up. So I was like, okay, I gotta step up my original plan. So it all started when I found the perfect pair of pink jeans at Ross. They were only $13 and I was like, oh, I'm in love. The problem is they weren't actually perfect because they were too big. So I was like, okay, there's gotta be something we can do with this. They're only $13 and I love them. So cute tutorial. Once you've established that your pants are too big, you're gonna wanna gather them in and pin them so you kinda know about how much you need to bring the pants in. And then you're gonna carefully take them off and try not to stab yourself. Once the pants are off, you're gonna wanna measure exactly how much you gathered them in and divide that by two because you're gonna make two darts in the back of the pants. So however much you gather in those two darts should add up to the big gather you did at the beginning, if that makes sense. Once it's pinned, you are then going to sew in a diagonal line from where you pinned at the top of your pants to the very bottom of the butt pocket, but make sure that the pocket is not tucked into where you're sewing because you don't want to sew that down in place. And you may be asking, why are we sewing so far down? This is the most effective way I've found to put darts in jeans and it not look weird. I've tried a lot of other methods and it just usually ends up looking weird. Also, this method tends to work better with thinner jeans because really thick denim is very hard to sew through in layers, so just keep that in mind. Once the darts are sewn, you can iron them flat so that they're not sticking straight up. And so just pick a side and iron them to whatever side you want. And also I just realized that I actually did iron them before I sewed the darts in to kind of like make a clean line so it was easier. So you can also do that if you, if you want them to be easier to sew. <laughs> so you can see we fixed the pants. They fit really great now. If you can see, there's no gapping. It's just perfect size, um, which is great. Um, but with that comes this issue of, you can see the pockets are bulging out a lot, which obviously that's because we cinched the pants in and we did not cinch the pockets in. So they're gonna be sticking out a lot. So the easiest way to fix your pockets is to just unpick them, lay them flat, sew them back on. But I'm opting for a cuter option, which is to make them into lace-up pockets that are actually adjustable. So to make your pockets lace up, you're gonna cut down the center and then take the two sides along the cut and tuck them underneath so that the raw edge is no longer showing and there's a gap in between the two sides of the pocket. And you'll wanna do that on both sides. Then iron the parts you folded under so they're super flat. Once you're done ironing, you can sew along the edges of that V shape on both sides of your pockets. Don't sew it to your pants. Um, and that will create a hem that will prevent them from fraying. And I just use the hem around the outside of the pocket to determine how thick to make the hem for that inside V shape. Okay, peeps, here we are at Joanne's looking at all the embroidery thread for our Barbie pants. So I'm thinking I like this for the pocket, but. This is the big process of deciding between because they got kind of like these pink ones and then they have these pink ones. They're kind of like clustered in shades. So, gotta decide. Once you've picked the perfect color of embroidery thread, you're going to measure out however many holes you wanna make in the pockets. I did six on each side, so 12 total for each pocket. So then you can measure them out evenly and then just kinda of do a little snip with your scissors. And then to actually create the eyelet, you'll just go around that hole with your embroidery thread until it kinda of makes a solid loop. And mine honestly weren't that even, so it's okay 
if they turn out uneven because it adds character to your pants. Once your eyelets are done, you can thread your ribbon through. I use kind of a white satin type ribbon and my holes were pretty small, so I needed to use a needle to actually get the ribbon through, so that, that might be the case for you as well. And then with this type of ribbon to prevent the edges from fraying, I just always take a lighter and kind of burn the edge a little bit and that prevents it from fraying. After I finished the pockets, I felt the pants needed more if they were truly going to be Barbie pants. So inspired by the photos of the Barbie cowgirl outfit from the movie, I decided to add stars to the bottom of the pant legs. So to add the stars, I bought more embroidery thread in a bunch of different colors and then I drew stars on the pants and went over them with the thread and then just some of them I filled in, some of them I didn't and then just tied off underneath the pants so that the knot is on the inside. If you're concerned about freehanding the stars on the pants, you can definitely print out and cut out a star stencil to trace. And also, if you want this process to be easier, you could definitely just paint the stars on in different shades of pink instead of doing the embroidery thread. I liked the dimension that it added, but you will notice in the reveal, I ended up only putting stars on one pant leg because it took way longer than I thought and I got lazy. So I still think it looks good, with it on one side, but yeah, if you if you want an easier process, definitely go for paint. So once I finished my Barbie pants, I was like, of course I need Barbie shoes. And then my grandma happened to be getting rid of some shoes and I was like, oh, these slip-on sandals are perfect to make shoes like her little fluffy slip-on shoes. So since the shoes I'm using are black, my first step was to use nail polish remover to get the color off so that I have a better base for painting. So if you can find slip-on shoes that are a lighter color, that's definitely easier for painting, but obviously this can work too. And then once you've got a better base for painting. I started with a couple layers of white just to kind of prime the shoes and then I painted over them with pink. I also had pink glitter paint left over from one of my other projects so I did do a coat of glitter on them which turned out very fun. I would also recommend that when you finish the shoes you put some kind of top coat on them whether it's like waterproofing or Mod Podge or something. I still need to do that with mine but because I didn't do that when I wore them they got really scuffed and some of the paint came off. Also be sure to uh, really, really shake your shoe a lot when you're waiting for the paint to dry. I found it's a, it's a super effective uh, method for drying your <laughs> shoes. And now for adding the fluff, I just ordered a pink feather boa, but it's like very fine feathers, so it doesn't look as tacky to me. <laughs> um, and then obviously I just measured the strap going across to figure out how long I needed to cut each piece. And I did have enough to like actually do a line of fluff along each of the straps on my shoe. But obviously, you know, if you buy a, a less strappy shoe, you wouldn't need as much of the fluffy stuff. And then to attach it to the shoe. I just use a hot glue gun, put it all on there, and then just expect that you will indeed have feathers all over your house after you're done making these shoes. Ooh.